something uh, that we did not address is a grounding, uh, I don't know if they call it stake or a grounding rod. So have you had experiences um, basically using a, these grounding mats, but then running the wire to the window outside in the soil, which is a recommendation I've seen uh, a lot of people make. I don't know if they measured whether the, whether this is better or worse. Have you seen this like create a better outcome for people if they are on the first or second floor and it's actually feasible? To me, it, it doesn't. When I've measured this, there's been several circumstances where we've used that because the house didn't have a ground or something. But again, in those situations, it's best to get the outlets grounded so that you can um, do it properly. But basically, what you don't want to happen is you you do the ground to stake in the ground outside, and then you're using products that are um, shielded inside. And there's a difference in voltage between the stake that you just put outside and and the shielding products that you have. Um, if there's like a, you know, often we'll, we'll measure like a 150 to 200 millivolt difference between the stake that you put outside and the one that's on the house ground. And the point isn't to be all the way at zero with the stake. The point is to, is to put your body in a position where there's no difference in voltage. So we've had some circumstances where, um, the customer will take it upon themselves to, uh, not follow our instructions on how to shield a room and they'll think that it's better to ground to stake in the ground outside and then they ground the paint to that or their canopy to that or whatever but then they'll continue to use the room by having things plugged in that are shielded or we have like hey put this shielded cable next to your your bed so that you can um, so that you can charge your phone at night without it affecting your body well, if you do that and the paint is grounded to a stake in the ground outside, but the house ground is the plug that you're using to shield the cable and there's 200 millivolts difference, basically you've made a shielded cable that's supposed to have zero impact on your body into a cable where it's got 200 millivolts emanating from it and it's acting like an electric field source because of that difference. Mm. And so it's way better to just have everything grounded to the same, uh, the same rod. And a lot of times the grounding, if you're concerned about the grounding rod in your house, not being conductive enough, put some drip water on it or water it every day, uh, make it more conductive, have it regrounded, get a grounding plate instead of a grounding rod or yeah. get regrounding rods that are, that are put, you know, four, four to six feet down angled down and you're going to get more more grounding therapy that way but you're going to get way more doing that and plugging right into the the wall than you would over these little stakes in the ground that are outside and if you want to be able to use electricity in the room and use shielded products you know and have that convenience of being able to have electricity while still being shielded and not having any impact on your body then you have to do it. You have to decide, okay, I want electricity or I don't want electricity like to be able to use it. So if you don't want electricity, you just want a cabin that doesn't have any electricity. Yeah. Ground to a stake in the ground outside because that's not connected to any electrical system. That's fine. We've had people who do that. They just have a cabin. They want to do that. They still want a shielded space. That's fine. But if you're going to be using electricity in your room, you have an air purifier, you have uh, some kind of bed cooling mat mattress or whatever, um, you're going to be using electricity inside. You really should just ground to the house ground so that you don't create differing voltage potentials in the room. Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy. You know, I am the co-creator of the EMF circle along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our circle members. Every month we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q&A session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because 
you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can listen back to. Everything is pre -record is recorded. You can either join live or just listen to the replay. So we have a cars masterclass. We have a pr free protection masterclass uh, uh, also that we did. And we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward. So we hope that you join us inside the EMF circle. Just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us. I hope to see you then.